Now that you know the basic steps of creating and managing a UCI, it's time to add some real content to it. Now you've seen that we can add controls from the schematic into the UCI by either dragging those elements or copying and pasting them. It's important to note that you can't drag a component itself into a UCI. You have to add its controls. And you can add as many or as few as you like. All of the graphic tools also work in the UCI. So you can create text boxes, for example, headers, group boxes, and polygons. If you're unfamiliar with these tools, check out the software overview videos. The UCI editor has a collection of clean, professional fonts, each of which have a variety of styles for you to choose from. When choosing colors for an object, our unique color picker allows you to select a hue from a color wheel, adjust brightness and saturation here, or you could input direct RGB values or hexadecimal color codes. Colors that have been used recently will be found in the design color tray for your convenience. When it comes to customizing buttons themselves, you've already seen most of the ways that you can adjust the button's size, color, label, and icon. But I also want to show you this property, button style. By default, most buttons have the gloss style, which gives you a faint highlight in the top third of the button. You could choose flat to keep a single solid color, or you could select image. This allows you to import your own custom graphics and completely replace the button with your own image instead. A button has a few different states, an on state and an off state, as well as the pressed on, which is visible while you're pressing the button to turn it on, and pressed off, which is visible while you're pressing the button to turn it off. You can also add external images into your UCI just for aesthetic purposes. You can add PNGs, JPEGs, SVG files, you kind of get the picture. Don't bother looking for an import image button because it's even easier than that. Simply drag an image from the file browser into the UCI editor. Objects that have transparencies, such as PNGs, will retain those transparent sections in your UCI. You can right click on an object and select bring to front or send it back to change the object's location in Z space. In fact, if you place an image on top of a button, the button will retain its functionality since the image itself is an interactive. This lets you create some pretty great custom effects using graphics with transparencies. For instance, if you have access to the ground plan or a 3D model of your venue, some simple manipulation of that image with a graphic editor could add transparency sections. You can then create an interactive map for things like a quick control for geographic areas of the venue, uh, zone selections for PA announcements, or a customized room combiner interface. All of these involve a single image that's simply placed on top of standard QSIS buttons and polygons. By the way, as you add images to your design, they're saved as part of your QSIS file, so don't worry about losing these links when you move them around. They're actually embedded in the design. Now, as we talk about adding images, let's also talk about image size. Different touchscreen models have different pixel dimensions, some of which you can see here. There would never be a reason to add an image greater than the pixel size of the screen you're displaying them on. In fact, if you add really large graphics to your UCI, you may even see a decrease in the screen's performance because the system has to refresh that image a lot of times per second. Even if the graphic is in a compressed format, the QSIS core has to uncompress that file to deliver it to the touchscreen. So don't bloat your design with super high resolution images, especially if you're using a lot of them. Once you start adding a lot of things to your UCI, like we have, you can see that we have a need to organize them all. Now, aside from using multiple pages, which you saw in the previous video, there are a lot of other tools at your disposal. You may have noticed that there's no grid to snap object in place, but you can add your own custom guidelines by double clicking in the margin on the left or top. You can then snap objects to these guidelines to make sure they're aligned. To remove a guide, you can either drag it into the top left-hand corner or right click and select clear guides. You also have a number of quick organizational tools in the right click menu. If you select a couple of objects and then right click, you can quickly align them on the same horizontal or vertical line. 
you could distribute them to give them even spacing, or pack them to stack them right next to each other. You could also save on-screen space by using pop-up buttons. Now, pop-up buttons can be found in the layout branch of your schematic library. When you add one of them to your UCI and interact with it, a hidden window pops up. You can adjust the size of this window, or uh, which side the pop-up is docking to, as well as the color of the window. Then, you can add as many controls as you like to the pop-up area. And when you tap the button again, they automatically hide. This lets you give your user quick access to a lot of controls that would otherwise clutter up the page without forcing them to navigate to an entirely different page. As you learn more tools, you'll probably see the value in combining them together. For instance, if we use a pop-up button in conjunction with our transparent ground planned image, you can make an interactive page that gives the user a variety of controls for multiple areas, such as gain control and amplifier status, all on one screen. Next, let's talk about layers. If you expand your page branch here in the UCI editor, you'll see that we've been working on layer one. You can add new layers to your page by pressing the plus icon and selecting add layer. Each layer is sort of like a pane of glass. You can stack all of these layers on top of each other and see right through them to the layer beneath all on the same page. You can also expand the Layers branch and see a list of all of the objects on that layer. Here, we can see the images, buttons, and graphic elements that I've just added. So I'll select my new layer and add some content from the schematic onto Layer 2. So right now, it may look the same as if I added them onto the same layer, but let's dig a little deeper to see what layers can do for us. For every layer and object, you could lock it in place using this box so that it can't be moved, or toggle the Show Hide button to make it temporarily invisible. You may find it useful to group similar controls together onto a single layer, and then hide that layer so that you can focus on another area. Or you may want to add a lower layer that's only your background image, and then lock it in place so that you don't accidentally select it when you're moving other objects. You can also adjust the order of these objects with a little more finesse by either nudging them up and down in Z-space with these buttons, or by dragging them into a new position in your UCI editor. Be aware that every object of a higher layer will appear above every other object in a lower layer. When you use the send to back or bring to front command, this only moves the objects to the front or back of that layer that it's on. This lets you get really specific with the visual appearance of your design without accidentally sending an object behind the background image. One of the greatest advantages of using layers is the fact that they can be programmed to transition on and off the screen. You'll need to program these transitions with either the Lua text controller or the block controller component, which you'll learn about in our deeper control learning curriculum. Once you've learned these commands, you could use layers as sub-panels that can slide on the screen and off the screen, or extra controls that can be revealed and then hidden again, or any other number of creative implementations. So, you've seen a lot of tools at your disposal to customize the visual appearance and functionality of your UCI. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to deploy that UCI to your touchscreen. We'll see you next time.